I wanted to bring people a bit up to date on a couple of things that have been going on. Now there has been a movement with Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy trustee as well. There has been progress and things have been looked at on that side as well. But uh, today I just wanted to talk about Wollumbin Horizons in liquidation the liquidator Stephen Starts and Vincent's and any of the creditors and interested persons that have an interest in realising money from the asset that was sold off that was 322 Kyogle Road. So pretty much if you know you've got an interest in it, you know that, well, you're a past lost investor. Now, this is probably more specific to any past loss to investor that may not have actually received this letter. It is just going out to ensure that anyone that does have an interest has been informed and has the opportunity. Because uh, you have until the 29th of January 2021 to complete uh, making sure that your claim is in there and it's part of what is being considered. Now I'll just take you down to the form before I say a little bit more on that. So this is the notice inviting formal proof of debt or claim. And this is where it brings it back to pursuant to the constructive trust. Now this constructive trust is as the judge decided in the judgment associated with trying to figure out because there was no deed documents or trust or anything actually established, the judge had to try and um, say what kind of a trust it was. And in that he said it was a constructive trust. Now, as I'm reading through the judgment and what a constructive trust meant, uh, I kind of came to the conclusion that there were a couple of people that actually bought in at a later period in time that would not actually be considered part of the constructive trust. I, you know, I'm not sure on that. But in essence, the constructive trust is all the people that paid to purchase the land and pay for the mortgage of 322 Wollumbin for paying into the concept that was sold to them. I will leave a link for this form so that anyone that may not have received it and should have received it, you can now follow the instructions just as readily as anyone that would have received it. Because uh, he gives um, this invitation and then further down, oh, hang on. All right, so right at the bottom of the page, there is this document and it's called Form 535. Now, there are two forms. The other one that I just showed you is actually referred to as a Form 2. That actually lays down the requirements for this form in the proof of debt. Now you have to understand that, um, well I'm not quite 100% sure, but I think there is one more sitting before a judge to get um, the debts verified and signed off on and yep, you can distribute them. So that's why the liquidator is asking for all proof of debts to be in by the 29th of January so that they can be assessed and then finalised through, well, I'm assuming the court giving the stamp of approval. So if you have not already provided the liquidator with this signed information, sign it and put it in again. Even if you have received this information, and you've already previously put in a claim, fill it out again and put it in, just to be sure. 
because he might turn around and, you know, after the 29th of January, you think you've put your claim in because he's got you listed there, but you didn't fill out this form and, uh, you know, it's too late now. So don't fall for that. If you have not filled out this specific form, you need to follow the directions right now. Make sure that you're doing everything that is required. And, oh, hang on. This is the creditors list. As part of this six pages, there is an explanation about who will be paid out and who won't be. There is the requirements of those under the construction trust to put in their proof of debts and there are two legal forms that have been put forward so that you can officially submit your claim and have it verified and ticked off and paid. So even if you see your name on this list and it's mentioned that yes you've previously advised and you're claiming a particular amount. If you have not filled out that specific form on page six, you may get that smart ass reply after the 29th of January and it's too late. Well, we told you to fill out the form and you didn't listen. And so thereby, um, you're up shit's creek without a paddle just because you assume that because he put you on the list of, you know, you've advised and you've claimed. No, what they're saying down here, whoops, hang on, you are invited for formal proof. What you've provided in the past is informal proof. You are invited to submit formal proof of debt or claim. And the way that that is accepted is with, whoops, sorry, this form. This form has to be completed as your formal proof of debt. Without it, there is no formal proof. So, please, if you have already got your name on a list but you have not signed this form 535 you need to get that form in before the 29th of January or you could be told sorry you didn't fill out the form I sent you the letter I told you to fill it out and it doesn't matter that you say, well, but I thought that because you had my name on the list and that I had made the claim that, you know, that I didn't have to. And that's why you've got to be very clear on this. This is now you have to provide formal proof. Everything up until this point was informal. So you need to fill out this form if you have not already done it. Otherwise you know, you're going to miss out. So when you look at the whole six pages and you look at what's been put uh, uh, out for assessment, there are several key features that come to mind. Uh, one of them here has been highlighted in bold. I note that non-trust creditors will have no entitlement to receive from funds from the realisation of assets of the trust. Now, the trust, the trust creditors, is the people that are associated with the constructive trust. These are the people that are required to give formal proof of their investment into the trust, into that constructive trust that the judge has ruled that's what it is. Now, I'm not 100% sure on this because, you know, some of these things can be so vaguely explained in some ways uh, that it's hard to actually confirm that that's the meaning. So I took all the creditors that are listed below 
and I pulled out all of those ones and stuck them into a list of the constructive trust, as the judge described it in the judgment, so that then I could identify the people that were on the creditors list that were identified as constructive trust creditors, aka trust creditors. Now, anyone else that doesn't fall within that constructive trust as a creditor to the company because they are owed that money back, uh, there are non-trust trust creditor. And all those other non-trust creditors include debts that are supposedly owed to the company by other people that are members, whether it's their member company or them themselves as a member claiming that they're owed this money. That is a non-trust creditor. And that big note in bold there says that non-trust creditors have no entitlement to receive funds. But that big bold sentence comes after in addition, a necessary step is to consider whether any claims made by creditors in the winding up are debts properly incurred by the company in its capacity as bare trustee of the trust for those parties who subscribe money for the purposes of becoming members of the Buller Buller community. See, this is where it's all this long-winded stuff. This is where it's easier to say the past lost investors, okay? I know it's a, it's a label, but it's less of a mouthful, isn't it? So to me in that paragraph, it's actually questioning that people that are claiming to be creditors in the winding up of the company, whether they were properly incurred debts of the company. So in other words... You know, if you've got a member that claims, oh, I borrowed, I lent them this amount of money and I did this for them and, you know, I billed them for something that I said that I, I did for them in my company name and I said I lent them all this money. Well, that is not what you'd call a properly incurred debt because in the foundation of the constructive trust, all these people were actually given the authority to act out or not act out in the company. And they did not authorise these debts. So basically, they don't have the say to say, well, yeah, we did incur these debts because the constructive trust creditors say, no, you didn't. We did not give that decision. And now with the constructive trust um, to back them up, they have more of a valid position. Now, the thing that I do find interesting too is that there has always been the talk of how the past lost investors were second in line to a secured creditor who had taken a mortgage out, well, AB had taken a mortgage out over the property and that secured creditor held first preference of getting paid out if 3222 was sold. Now, the list below here, where there is talk of the creditors, all right, now let's go down here. This actually says all creditors. It doesn't say um, just unsecured creditors. It says all creditors. And it comes to the end of all creditors. And none of them have actually been listed as anything other than unsecured creditors. So there is no secured creditor claim against Wollumbin Horizons Proprietary Limited. The existence of a, a security over the property and a first claim because of a mortgage uh, seems to have not eventuated. I can't tell you any more than that, that it's just not on 
all the creditors list. Now all these ones with zero qualities, a lot of them are actually deregistered company. They've even got Mark Darwin's organ amazing in here. And uh, <laughs> where is it? Yeah, organ amazing. And uh, They've got Wollumba well, and Dreamtime. These are all deregistered companies, along with the fact that it's not um, property investments or what is it? Boundary properties to Woomba. It's um, property. Oh, where is it? Hang on. So the dollar value I had listed on my creditors list for boundary properties to Woomba was. Well, pretty much this dollar value, it's slightly variant, uh, only in the hundreds and dollars cents, but in the ballpark of 154000 yeah, it's it's neither here nor there in the grand scheme of things, but uh, the name has changed from Boundary Property to Woomba to Boundary Property Trust. Now, that doesn't exist as a registered company. Now, the thing about anything is that any of these people that are making a claim actually have to prove that they are a legally identifiable person. And any company making a claim also has to be a legally registered company. It has to exist. Boundary Property Trust does not exist as a company or as a business or anything that can be identified. It's just a name. And who is it a name for? Well, it's actually listed on um, some images that I found posted by Rhyme of um, Mount Burrell and the NCV commercial accounts. And Boundary Property Trust was listed as a heading for paying out director or director wages or loans for Adrian Brennock, Philip Dixon and Mark Darwin. There may have been another one on there, but I'm not quite sure from memory, so I'm not going to say. But there are also other things on this list that are duplicating and replicating. Because uh, Bulla Bulla Community Pri Proprietary Limited and um, Nightcap Village Proprietary Limited and the unit holders of the Bulla Bulla Community Trust Village well, you see, one owns the other and the unit holders of Bulla Bulla Community Village Trust control the Bulla Bulla Community Proprietary Limited. But it didn't end up being that. It then went to Wollumban Dreamtime and then it went to Wollumban Horizons and because they had one failure after another. And it was because Mark Darwin had a bad name with the banks, and so did Adrian Brannock. So they went through loan brokers. And what happened to the secured debt that uh, was previously held over the property? How did that suddenly get paid out? Did it even exist at all? I mean, the, there are confusing factors around this because it's definitely there are only unsecured creditors on the all creditors list there is no unsecured creditor here i mean no secured creditor so if there was a secured creditor that held that because of a mortgage over the property it does not exist in the final estimation right now so yeah, don't know what happened to it. So on this list of unsecured creditors, when you go through and you find out who trust creditors are and who non-trust creditors are, you realise that um, there's a reason why up the top here the liquidators stated that non-trust creditors will have no entitlement because that's the cut-off point. Uh, once they pay, like uh, if you'd noticed there, they owe the, the Tweed Council quite a bit of money. There will be money that 
there'll be a, oh, a heap of money that will come out to go to the liquidator to pay for doing all of this, and that's been booked up over the years. There will also be legal fees that have been booked up in the legal cases associated with this over the years because um, the, the liquidator is not a lawyer. He had to employ a lawyer to represent him in court, so that all costs money. And that again will all come out of the realisation of the asset. So once you take out all those chunks and you pay back all the trust investors, you're pretty much not going to have anything left. And if there's any tax entitlement that has to be paid to, I mean, there are priority creditors that will get something anyway. Um, I would assume the council would also be one of those priority creditors. So when they're talking about non-trust creditors, they're certainly not talking about the council or the liquidator's fees or the, the lawyer that represented the liquidator. There are some non-trust creditors that will get a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah. Some that, well, yeah, the council have been waiting a long time. They could use that money to shut them down for good. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd fund them up well for the next round of um, taking them to court, wouldn't it? Okay, so I think that's pretty much rounded it all up that uh, if uh, people have not, if you have got an interest in 3222 and in uh, the Wollumbin Horizons, you're a past lost investor, and if you have not filled out this form, this one down here, you must fill it out and send it in before the 29th of January. That's your deadline. And seriously, if you do not fill it out, there is no excuses past this. There is no way of saying, well, I didn't know. Well, you would have received this letter. Well, I'm hoping that all of the people named would have received a letter, but you know that they may even send things to the wrong address or an old address and you never get it. Either anyway, this is just going out to make sure that there is the opportunity for people to know. If you've got an interest in Wollumbin Horizons, you need to fill out this form and make sure it's back to the liquidator by the 29th of January. And if you don't, well, that's really stupid. <laughs> it's a little form, okay? It's a really little form. And all you've got to do is even make reference to something that you've previously submitted. So you turn your informal proof into formal proof. Okay? Just validate your claim. <laughs> anyway, I'm leaving it there and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.